Let's go, baby. All right, I can't do the the glasses. I just can't. I thought I could, and I, I just can't. Anyways, this video is going to be all about overrated and underrated teams in the Big Ten coming into this next season. Of course, there are a lot of teams coming into 2024, rightfully so, and this happens every single offseason, right? There are a lot of teams that kind of, there's a hype train kind of builds around them, and then there's kind of a lot of teams that we kind of underestimate and we overlook. So I'm going to give you guys in this video three teams that I think are currently kind of overrated. I'm going to give you guys the Vegas lines on their over-unders and kind of where I think they may finish the season, and then three teams that I think are underrated, and I'm going to do the same thing with them as well as well as two teams that i think i kind of wanted to say that they're either overrated or underrated but i don't know if they're kind of uh out there in the public forum or the court of public opinion i don't know if they're really either of those they're just kind of teams that i think there is a lot of hype around for right for the right reasons but i think the hype is getting a little out of hand and so those are going to be two teams that i think we kind of need to pump the brakes on for lack of a better term those are a couple teams that the, i'm just going to be honest the the off-season hype for one of them in particular is just off off the fucking rails and it's only may so <laughs> Hold on to your hats for the rest of the offseason for that team because it's it's already gotten out of hand. But anyway, like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks to everyone that subscribed in the last few days, by the way. I know many of you probably have watched my prediction videos in which I got all the fancy graphics and all that stuff going on. We're still going to keep doing stuff like that, don't worry. But occasionally I just like to get on, on the camera, on the mic, and, and talk about Big Ten football, which is my favorite conference. Obviously, it's the home to my favorite team. So... Yeah, let's just get right into it, though. Rutgers is my first team on this list that I think are a little overrated. And now I want to qualify this as well. I want to throw this out there. This doesn't necessarily mean that I think that these teams are going to be terrible or that these teams are going to be, you know, just absolutely garbage this next season. If I think a team is overrated, that has a lot to do with just sometimes the hype train for the team getting out of hand. Sometimes it, it's more a thing about the the public opinion and narrative around some teams, I think, just being a little out of control. Because especially in the case of Rutgers, I don't think they'll be a bad team by any means this next season. If you watch my uh, prediction video for Rutgers for this next season, I think that they'll go 8-4. and four. But part of the reason for me putting them on this overrated side of my list here is because I've seen a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people even like talking heads on ESPN and, and other outlets, a lot of people on the various uh, Voice of College football channels and things like that saying that Rutgers is going to go something crazy like 9-3 and three or 10-2 and two next season. And you really got to pump the brakes on that. Sometimes I think we see a team that at first it looks like they have an easy schedule. And we're going to get into Rutgers' schedule here in just a second too because it's not as easy as it looks on its face. But sometimes we see a team, especially in the Big Ten, and we think, oh, they don't have to play Ohio State. They don't have to play Michigan. In the case of Rutgers this season, they don't have to play Penn State either. So they avoid the three big teams in the Big Ten. And we think, oh, they're going to have the easy schedule. They're just going to roll to 10-2. and two. And, of course, there's a lot of hype as well around Kyle Manungai and that Rutgers defense pretty, being pretty good. But 10-2 to me is just outrageous. And like I said, I've heard a lot of people say it out there, 9-3, 10-2. The over-under that Vegas set for this team is 6.5. So that kind of goes to show – right around where even I thinking that they'll go eight and four this next season is over the Vegas win total for this team. Their schedule on its face looks relatively easy, but when you consider the fact that Rutgers is ranked like 43rd or 45th or something like that in preseason SP plus, they got to play Virginia tech Washington. They got to travel to Nebraska. They have to host Wisconsin. They host UCLA, which while UCLA has a lot of shit going on right now, is ranked 37th, a few spots above them in SP+. They host UCLA. They have to travel to USC and face Lincoln Riley. And then they got to play at Maryland, who is somewhere around the same, like 45th to 50th in SP+, in the preseason. I'm going to tell you guys right now, they're not winning all of those games, and they just about have to to have a 10-2 and season. Uh, yeah, so Rutgers, I think, wildly overrated right now. I think a lot of people are looking at the fact that they don't play Michigan, they don't play Ohio State, and they don't play Penn State. And thinking, oh, this team can make be a surprise team for next season. And I think eight and four, where I kind of predicted them at, will be a surprise, a pleasant surprise. But 
<laughs> this team's starting quarterback is going to be Ethan Kaliak Manis. You can't tell me a team with a starting quarterback <laughs> like that. Nothing against Ethan. I'm sure he'll be he'll become a, a decent college quarterback. But you can't tell me a team with that quarterback playing all these games again against a lot of teams that are kind of like similarly ranked to Rutgers. In fact, several of them: Washington, Nebraska, Wisconsin, UCLA, USC are all ranked above them. You can't tell me that team's going 10 and 2. You just can't. I think Rutgers is becoming wildly overrated. And then next on my list I have Michigan State. I have Michigan State next on my list because of completely different reasons from Rutgers. Again, all these teams it's kind of more based on what the public opinion is as opposed to what the actual facts around their case or what their season will actually be is. I don't think there's anyone out there saying that Michigan State is going to go 10 and 2 like Rutgers outside of some crazy homers out there, some Michigan State slaps. But you get that with every fan base, right? I think the common consensus, though, there are a lot of people out there thinking that merely just because they added Aiden Childs and they've clearly made an upgrade at head coach, they're suddenly going to be like a 7 and 5, 8 and 4 team. And I, I just, I just hate to tell you guys, I don't think that's the case, especially when you look at the schedule again, like we look, just looked at the schedule with Rutgers. Michigan State's schedule isn't too difficult in the out-of-conference and, and later on in the season, but right in the middle of the season, they have a four-game slog that's like basically guaranteed to be four losses right there. And then when you consider, for instance, the Vegas line is five and a half for them, I personally predicted them to be an eight, a four and eight team, excuse me. A lot of people out there, again, think this team is suddenly going to go seven and five to eight and four. I think, not going to lie, maybe some kind of like lazy uh, reporting or some lazy analysis. I hate to say it, but we get a lot of that out there in the college football world, too. People see who your quarterback is and who your coach is, and that's all they really base their opinions on. And that's fine. That's fandom. That's most college football stuff out there. But here we like to deep dive a little bit deeper into it. If you've been paying attention, by the way, Michigan State just lost a ton of players in the transfer portal, even more so than they had lost earlier this spring. I did initially have Michigan State in my top 10 in my uh, post or off-season power rankings. But in my postseason power rankings, I had to drop them out because they've just lost so many again the Vegas line on this team is five and a half wins and I think that's fair I could be wrong they could win five or six games I have them as a four and eight team and again right in the middle of that schedule Ohio State at Oregon a bye week thankfully you get a bye week to, to get a break from the beatdowns you'll have had for those two weeks leading into that and then they got to host Iowa and they got to play at Michigan those are just basically four guaranteed losses right there not to mention the fact that then in the out of conference schedule you do have to travel to Boston College and then you got to play some other teams ranked relatively similarly to you in SP plus like Indiana and teams like that so I got them at four wins Vegas has their over under at five and a half I think that's fair and anyone out there saying that like it's it's a seven and five or eight and four season for Michigan State I think is is wildly overvaluing them I think a lot of people are are overrating them because of the again the quarterback and the head coach but there's basically nothing else there out there to support them and now with this team i feel like i have to even call myself out because i predicted even that this team would go nine and three next season but they're again like with rutgers like with a, a lot of other teams in the big 10 this season there's a lot of people out there predicting even more wins for this team this next season and it's hard to it, it's hard to see it honestly and again another overrated team another team that i think is this uh, we're all getting a little carried away on the hype train with and, and that's of course nebraska I, I i myself again picked them to go nine and three this season they're over under according to vegas is seven and a half so even i at nine and three have them a, a whole one one point five win and a half over their over under um I've seen out there on like college football with Sam, for instance, he's very high on Nebraska. I think in his latest power rankings, he has them at like the fifth best team in the Big Ten. A lot of people are really high on them for, for good reasons. I'm not saying it's not for good reason, but again, I think Vegas knows what they're talking about here. They have them at seven and a half. Their schedule, looking at it right now, isn't too difficult. They do have to travel to Ohio State. They do have to travel to USC. But again, like some other teams in the Big Ten, and that's the thing too, I think we're all getting a little carried away sometimes because the Big Ten schedules have changed so much. A lot of the schedules for a lot of the teams have kind of lightened up because there's no divisions and because we've added four new teams. So it's a lot more spread out. Some teams get, get some clear advantages from that because, again, Nebraska avoids Michigan. I don't think they have to play Oregon looking at it here. But 
they're ranked back at like 39th or somewhere in the 40s or something like that for good reason in preseason SP+. And then they got to play a bunch of teams that are ranked ahead of them. They're, I think they'll have a tough time handling that Rutgers team we just talked about it a minute ago, by the way. Uh, they'll have a tough time, of course, at Ohio State. It might be a tough game against UCLA even. Then they got to travel to USC, and they close their season out with Wisconsin at home and at Iowa. Looking at it, honestly, I think that 7.5 number from Vegas is a good number. It's a good number. And and thinking about it even more in depth, I think a lot of us are thinking that we're making the assumption that because Matt Rule has always been great wherever he's gone in his second season, that that's just going to happen again. That has no weight or bearing on this season. There's a, a ton of outside factors that factor into this season that weren't existent when he was at those other places of course now he's now he's coaching at you know the big 10 with a big uh big level high level competition so that's not to say that it's going to happen again automatically and again nebraska's a team that's starting a freshman quarterback next season like rutgers with eighth and kelly Manis. i know i know dylan rayola is a five star and all that but no team with a five star no team with a freshman quarterback starting whether or not they're a five star uh, is usually that great right off the bat. So I think for people out there to be uh, even as high as I am now, looking back on my own projection, I'm thinking eh, maybe it's more like an eight and four season. But I do think they'll be pretty good. They added some people in the transfer portal. They added that kid from Wake Forest. They added another from Texas at wide receiver. So uh, Dylan Rayola will have some weapons there for sure. But thinking that this team is going to go like 10 and 2, I think it's just nuts. And I think, again, there's a reason why Vegas has their over under. All right. And now we got to get into two teams that I think we just need to pump the brakes on. Not two teams that I think are overrated. Two teams I think that are rather property rated, but out there in the public eye and the forum of public opinion. Um, it, it's just starting to get a little, a little off the rails. And the first one's Ohio State. And I know I'm probably already going to get a shit ton of comments rolling in in the comments. Well, of course, the Michigan guy thinks Ohio State's overrated. Look. You can go back and watch my prediction video I literally just put out yesterday. You can look, see everything I put out on Twitter. And by the way, like this video, subscribe to the channel, all the good stuff. Follow us on Twitter. I have Ohio State picked to potentially win the Big Ten. I have them picked to make it to the Big Ten cha championship game. I have them picked to go 11-1 and one this season. But the insane level of fucking hype that this team gets each and off every offseason is coming to a massive peak and i know they've added guys in the transfer portal and they got chip kelly and this and that the problem for me with ohio state and again this is mostly based on where the public perception is of a, of a team in comparison to reality because the reality is i think they're a really good to great college football team but the fucking <laughs> tenor of absolute hype hyperbole around this team right now people are already talking about this team like they're like the 2002 miami hurricanes they haven't played a single goddamn game so far this season i'm sorry we haven't seen it people are already like willing to hand this team the national championship trophy in the off season and there's a reason why so many michigan fans like myself and other people out there and even uncle lou and others have made the jokes about the off season national championship because Ohio State fans are a very loud and proud fan base, and rightfully so. But damn, y'all are filling up the room with some nonsense right now. And I think you need to pump the brakes because I do think it's incredibly hard to go 12-0 and in a season. Even the Vegas odds makers have your over-under win total at 10.5, so they're pretty much banking on you having one loss. I have you picked to lose one game. You have a super easy charm and soft schedule, but you even still have two really difficult games on the schedule, if not three, because you still have to play Michigan. You haven't beat Michigan at all in the last four years, and I hate to say it, but that's just the facts. This is the truth. you got to travel to Oregon, and you have to travel to Penn State, which might be a night game before that even. So this all this like hype around them just potentially going undefeated and 17 and 0 or whatever whatever it'll take to to win with the 12 team playoff i forget exactly how many games you'll have to win i think i think it's just way off the rails at this point i <laughs> just straight up do and let's face it ryan day hasn't had a a one loss season let alone an undefeated season since when 2019 did they only did they only win did they only lose one game in 2019 i think i think that's i think that's accurate they've lost two games a season for the past three so 
yeah, I think way over, like not way overhyped, because again, they're going to be a great team. But th- this is a team we need to pump the fucking brakes on already. They're not that Ray Lewis, Lewis uh, Willis McGahee, crazy Miami Hurricanes team, and maybe they'll become that. We don't know, but it's it's May, dude. Check yourself. <laughs> And then again, this team is just one that I think we need to kind of check the brakes on. It's one that I kind of think that it's starting to get a little bit out of hand, but I don't necessarily think they're completely overrated. And that's just Wisconsin. Wisconsin, of course, brings in Tyler Van Dyke. Uh, they're moving over to the Dairy Raid or whatever you want to call it. If that's even what we're still calling it, I don't, I don't know. Whatever they want to do out there is fine by me, honestly, as long as they don't even play my team next year. So what do I really care, honestly? But Wisconsin, I even have them at eight wins. I have them going eight and four. You can watch my preview video on them, of course. But even that is over the Vegas win total of six and a half they could win seven eight nine games even but there's some people out there again that are really highly rating them really putting them up there on a pedestal and cashing those tracks before they're even before they're even available did i make that did i make that analogy right whatever i'm not cutting this out (laughs) too lazy to edit that out whatever um but yeah i I think it's not as egregious as the ohio state hype but then again wisconsin fans i think are more reasonable than ohio state fans that's not really saying much i know that's not much of a compliment wisconsin fans because let's all face it ohio state fans are some there's some really kind nice awesome intelligent ohio state fans out there there are also a plethora of ohio state fans and unless you pick their team to go 12 and 0 every season are just they are they did they just freak out like you don't know ball and it's like what team goes 12 and 0 every season anyway wisconsin is another one that i think we just kind of need to pump the brakes on and realize that tyler van dyke hasn't been so great the last couple seasons while he's been dealing with these injuries and transfer quarterbacks rarely play out that well anyway uh, and we'll have to see what that defense looks like because they're making some schematic changes along the defense as along, uh, along with the offense, and they've had a litany of players leaving the transfer portal. So a lot of chaos going on over there in Madison. I don't see them going 9-3 and three or 10-2 and two like some people out there do. I see them as an 8-win team, and even that is about a win and a half over what the Vegas line is. So, yeah, pump the brakes on them as well. And I'm going to try and get these last three teams in here all in one take because holy hell if I had to already do a lot of editing on this. And if you haven't followed along on the channel already, I hate editing videos. I do. I'd rather just talk to you guys. By the way, watch the live streams uh, every other Wednesday night at 8.30 through the off season, And every Wednesday night at 8.30 in the season, you'll be able to call in soon via our new Discord. But anyway, I got Washington, Iowa, and in Michigan as my three most underrated teams in the conference. And and one of these in particular, I happen to very much agree with where the Vegas line is. Uh, the Vegas line has Washington at seven and a half. I have them at seven and five. I could see them going eight and four, but again, like Wisconsin, a lot of chaos around that team. For some reason, it seems like the public perception around this team is that they're just not going to be very good at all this next season. I've seen a lot of people wildly undervaluing this team and people forget Jed Fish and when he was at Arizona last season, they went like ten and three. They went nine and three in the regular season. Came within a, a came within a breath of beating Washington last season, and uh, people forget that they were nine and three, ten and three with their bowl game win. And you may be asking, why do I care so much about what Arizona did last year? Well, go to On Three's website for Washington in the portal and just look at all the players that they brought in from Arizona. Of course, they also brought in Will Rogers. Do I think they're going to be a great team right off the bat? No, I'm not saying they're going to be amazing. Again, this is just teams who I think will be a little bit better than what everybody else is saying out there in terms of underrated. Um, I think they'll be seven and five, but I've seen some people with some crazy prognostications of like five and seven, six and six, four and eight. I don't think they'll be that bad. And the Vegas odd makers say that they could be an eight win team with that line at seven and a half. And the next team on my list, Vegas. I really disagree with Vegas on this one. I really feel like I disagree with just about everyone on this one. Even college football with Sam had Iowa ranked lower than I thought uh, he would, he would have them ranked Iowa Vegas odds have them at seven and a half wins this next season. Their schedule is a bit difficult and I'm not going to pull the schedules up for these teams, by the way, because we're just kind of briefly going over these, but th- their schedule is a little bit difficult. Um, But again, now that I think about it, their schedule's full of a lot of teams that are kind of ranked right around the same area as them. Off the top of my head, they had to play Wisconsin, Nebraska. I think they might have to play Washington. I know they have to play USC because that's a really intriguing. Iowa versus USC this next season is going to be a Big Ten game. That's fucking mind-blowing weird. 
I have them at 10 and 2 next season. They're one of the most experienced teams in all of college football. If I remember right, they're within the top 30 of returning production. They return a ton of production on that Phil Parker defense. Cade McNamara won't be injured to start the season. And look, don't look now, but they added Tim Lester as their offensive coordinator. Tim Lester, in his time at Western Michigan, had Western Michigan in the top 30 in the country in offensive production. I think they're going to be decently good next season. I think they're going to be one of the better teams in the Big Ten, and that's what they've been for the past couple of seasons. Every season, I feel like because we're so offensive orientated with college football these days, unless a team has an offense that just blows us out of the water, that just blows our minds, then we think that like they're a terrible team. And Iowa, of course, hasn't had any offense, but even in spite of not having any offense, they went 10-2 and two last season in the regular season. I have them doing that again. Vegas is much lower on them. A lot of people, I think, are much lower on them. I think they're incredibly underrated. And then the last team I'm just going to briefly mention before I get out of here because i got to get going. <laughs> this is taking up longer than I thought it would, is Michigan. And I know people are probably already going to come at me in the comments, but wild, crazy things are being said about Michigan right now. Of course, they lost their head coach. They lost their entire offensive line from last season. They lost a plethora of guys to the NFL draft. And that's reason to pump the brakes on them for sure. I have them going 10-2. and two. I don't think it's that outrageous when you actually look at the schedule, when you look at the talent that they do still have. Their average recruiting ranking over the last three cycles is 13th. That's top 15 roster in all of college football. They did add some guys in the portal like Jay Sean Barham, who might be one of the best linebackers in the country, a former five-star recruit. They added Josh Preeb, a third-team All-Big Ten guard to solidify that offensive line. They do return a ton of defensive production from the best defense in college football from last season. They'll still have the best cornerback in all of college football. So all these people out here, a lot of Ohio State fans, I will say, there's Kevin Noon went on a big rant a couple weeks ago on the voice of college football about how they'll be lucky to go eight and four. Uh, Ohio State has such a large fan base and so many people in like the ESPN circles are alumni of Ohio State that I think they kind of dominate where the... Uh, Overton window sits on a team in terms of public opinion sometimes. And so I think it's a little bit of that. And it's also just a little bit of like Michigan is one of the more hated teams in all of college football, just like USC, just like Texas, just like Ohio State. Anytime Michigan loses anything or a coach goes here or there, or something happens with them, there's a ton of people out there piling on them, and, and rightfully so. They're one of the biggest programs in all of college football. So I think people have taken an opportunity to kind of pile on Michigan with all that they have lost. But if you're being more objective, if you're looking at the talent they do have and the schedule and all of that, it's going to be hard to see this team being worse than 9-3. and three. And lo and behold, the Vegas line is at 9.5. And I think that says a lot because I, we all know the Vegas odd makers know more than most all of us, certainly more than me. I have them at 10 and 2. I have them just over that 9.5 mark. I think it's absolutely insane to think that this team will go 6 and 6 or 7 and 5 or anything like that. And there are a lot of people out there saying it. Hit the over on that 9.5, I think, for Michigan. That's going to close this one out. My toddler's waking up. I got to get going. I spent way too much time editing the first half of this video. Not enough time actually recording it, but that's okay. We'll live and learn, learn here. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification while you're at it, and we'll be around for the rest of the offseason doing more content like this, so look forward to it. I don't know how to end videos the right way. Anyway, go blue.